So here are two examples using significant figures in calculations. Um, here we have mixed adding, subtracting, with multiplying and dividing. And this is what uh, students find the most challenging. So let's look at this first, first question here. Um, it's always a good idea to just do the math and write down all the digits that your calculator gives you. So I'm going to do that. So 32.99, I'm sorry, 232.99. Minus 232.1, um, and that's a quantity, so I'm going to press equals, divided by 5.3531 equals, and I'm going to write down everything, 0 0.16625888803. Did you get that number? Okay. Because we're doing subtracting and dividing, for significant figures purposes, we need to look at each of those operations separately. So we need to look at the result of this subtraction. I'm going to go back and do that part again, 232.99. Depending on your calculator, you may be able to just scroll up and see the result of that. Um, my calculator is giving me as an answer there 0.89. I want to identify how many significant figures, more specifically, where the last significant figure is in this result. For subtracting, we use the fewest number of decimal places. The first number has two decimal places. The second number has one decimal place. So how many decimal places would the answer have? Just one. I'm going to underline that first decimal place I'm going to leave the second decimal place there because I don't want to introduce rounding errors. Now, though, when I look at this number, how many significant figures are in that whole number? Just one. The eight. The eight, that underlying digit, is the last significant figure. The nine is not a significant figure. When I take this number and divide by five point. 3531. So this, oh, wrong color, sorry. Now I'm thinking about this operation. Dividing, I'm going to look at fewest number of significant figures. How many significant figures does 5.3531 have? Five. So which is smaller, one or five? One, of course. So that tells me that I need to round my answer to one significant figure. What's that going to round to? 0 0.2. And that's the answer that should be reported. I am keeping this decimal place, this first decimal place. I look at the first digit that I'm getting rid of, it's 6. That means I round up. So the answer is 0 0.2. Any questions? Yes? Let's say it was going to be 1.89. That would mean there would be two significant figures there, right? Yes. Yeah, if, if this number was a 3, if this was 3, then this would be 1.89, and we'd have two significant figures, and that would change things. But it isn't. Any other questions? Let's look at the next one. Oh, sorry, question. Yeah, so when you do this, you're not going to look like you said if it's 1.89. So you're not looking at the significant figures in the original equation at that point? That is correct. When I get to this point, I am not looking at the number of significant figures in the numbers in the original equation. Because when I subtract here, I am not concerned about number of sig figs, but about number of digits. And that's something that's kind of hard to get your mind around. So the answer would be 1.2? Still? Feel like yeah, if, if we ended up with a 1 here, and this was 2 sig figs, then we'd end up with 1.2. Yeah. Any other questions? You have to look at each of the problems separately, each operation, okay? 
because you can't just combine them. Yes? Um, why is the 9 not significant? This 9 is not significant because when I do that subtraction, 232.99 minus 232.1, when I do that subtraction, this is, this is where the last significant digit is. Okay? Any other questions? The way you learn is by making mistakes and asking questions. It's good. Okay, let's look at this one. Again, we've got mixed operations. Here we've got a multiplication and a subtraction. Again, I'm going to do the whole problem first and write down the answer and then round it afterwards. 3.1410 times 2.4367 equals, and then subtract 2.34, and again, equals. This is 5.313647. Now I want to look at the result of this multiplication so I can compare it when I subtract. So that multiplication is, uh, result is 6, sorry, 7.6536747. What's the rule for multiplying? Number of significant figures. This number has how many sig figs? Five. And this one has how many? Five. So how many significant figures does the result have? Five. One, two, three, four, five. You're looking for the smallest number of significant figures in the number you're multiplying. It's the same this time, so five is the smallest. If this was my final answer, I would round it here. So I'm underlining that. I don't want to round it because dropping off that 747 can introduce rounding errors. But now I'm going to take this number and subtract the other one. And I'm going to get this result, but I have to look at now the number of decimal places in the subtraction. This one has four decimal places. I underline the last significant digit. And the underlining is just a little technique we use to help ourselves keep track. Four decimal places, and this one has two decimal places. Which has the fewer number of decimal places? The second one, two decimal places. My answer needs to have two decimal places. So this is going to end here, in the second decimal place. And so I'm going to round that and say this is 5.31. The digit that I'm getting rid of is the 3. That's less than 5, so we're going to round down. Any questions? Yes? And how does that one have only four significant figures? This doesn't have four significant figures. It has four decimal places because I'm subtracting, and so I'm comparing decimal places. Does it go back to the, the way you formatted it? Um, the, the reason I underlined the six here is because this number has five sig figs and this has five significant figures. So this number has five significant figures, but it has four decimal places that are significant because that is the, the last significant figure. And so, oops, it's the wrong place to draw the line. I need to draw the line there. And so 5.31. Three six seven four seven. My number needs to stop where this line is. Okay. If they both have the same, then the answer has the no, same. No, I mean the line has to go where both have, have the same amount of. Uh, the line. Okay. The question is, 
where is the line going? The, the way I think of this is, is I'm looking, going from left to right like we read, I'm looking for the decimal place that I come to first that has an uncertain digit. So the uncertain digit is always the last digit, or in this case where we haven't rounded it yet, it's the underlying digit. <coughs> So this second decimal place, this is the uncertain digit in that measurement, and so that's where I draw the line. Okay, I do need to go on and cover chapter 2.